Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Jeff Brooks, Chief Marketing Officer of Casper. Hello, hello. How is everybody? Yeah? Well rested? See what I did there? You get your 8.4? Um, so, housekeeping matters first. Contrary to the queries of about three people now, this is not a pajama top. Um, someone sent out an email saying that if you own a piece of linen, this would be the appropriate venue for it. Kate's closed. Um, okay, enough about that. So um, that was awesome, by the way. Alex is great, and uh, it's such an honor to be here. Thank you, Ad Week and Brand Week, and in the company of some great brands, uh, among them Casper. I'm Casper, CMO. I've been working with the business for about a year and a half. Um, half of that time on the agency side, running their agency, and then for the past nine months um, in-house as their CMO, and it's been quite a journey. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about it today, and hopefully um, one or two things will stick with you um, beyond this conference. Um, first of all, how many of you have Caspers in this room? That's pretty good. That's about in line with West Coast consumption. That's not bad. Um, uh, Fascinating, right? So for a company that's just over four years old that started with one mattress, one distribution channel, one geography, today we have over 10 product categories with hundreds of SKUs. We have uh, owned and operated retail fleet of 20 stores and growing in the US and Canada. We have wholesale distribution with partners like Amazon, Target, Nordstrom, and we ship to seven countries around the world. So pretty, pretty awesome. Um, and the press, um, since the theme of this uh, conference and, and, and presentation is disruption, the press has been talking about disruption too from the beginning. But what I love about it is that the things that we're doing are clearly getting picked up as time passes, right? So the beginning was all about disrupting an old category and bed in a box and you know, upending traditional mattress. It's moved to establishing really, really like a sleep as a lifestyle and what the mindset around that is. And then most recently, taking on brick and mortar and bringing that same spirit of design thinking, customer centricity, innovation into the physical world. So it's been pretty awesome. And, um, and when, you, when you do stuff like that, um, consumers tend to reward you. I'm going to just read you one or two of these because I'm going somewhere with this. Um, my Casper mattress, these are all in the last year, and most of them in the last few months. My Casper mattress is so comfortable, I didn't get to feel the earthquake. <laughs> I have to say that hand on my heart, my mattress is the most comfortable mattress I've ever slept on, currently going to bed around 8 p.m. just to spend more time on it. I may not even get up on Christmas Day. Right? Like, this is the stuff that comes in every, every single day. Somebody tried to tell me their mattress was more comfortable than my Casper. Hashtag fake snooze. That was a good one. That was a good one. Right? Um, and so why? What, what, why is the business taking off like this? Why is Casper still a darling of the press four and a half years later? Um, and why are consumers anthropomorphizing this mattress um, as though it's a member of their family? Um, my conviction to you, my thesis for you today, would be that as we think about challenger brands, that a lot of times we get caught when we think about innovation on the hamster wheel of innovation. And that is a cautionary tale where you get stuck in the commodity trap just because the pace of change is simply too fast to keep up if you're chasing what I call dash ER marketing, better marketing, right? Um, so your, your product has to be better on some level, your service has to be better on some level, your value proposition has to be better on some level or else you don't have a business. But different. Differentiation is a thing that actually, in my mind, creates sustainable long-term advantage. It's easier to defend, um, and it actually is where the core of your value proposition sits. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about a little bit for the next, um, I can't possibly, seven minutes. Seven minutes? Really? Oh, man. All right, I got to go. So Casper started, you guys all know, um, uh, based on... Uh, uh, an observation in a category that hadn't been changed in 150 years, right? Which was that a few players controlled supply and distribution, and the, the 
experience of buying a mattress kind of sucked. You went into a big store, clearing house of mattresses all over the floor, commissioned salesperson hovering over you with his clipboard, trying to get you in that bed and out the door. And, and Casper revolutionized that. So the idea of sort of putting people first in the DTC model was core to Casper. Fortunately for, for me and, and all of us, uh, the founders of the company realized that they had to very early on go beyond just what I would call a, a, a business model sense of disruption into uh, disruption in a more experiential way. And a lot of times when we talk about digital transformation or disruption, we tend to think about technology and business model. A lot of what I'm going to show you today is not that. It's about thinking about disruption where every single interaction you have with a prospect or a customer is a brand touch point. Thinking about building a world, a visual world for your brand and your products that is so differentiated that it can't be copied, right? That's what this company did four and a half years ago that we still push out in the world today, this whimsical, approachable, playful sort of um, aesthetic that drives a lot of what we do. Same with the tone of voice. So from the top of the page to the bottom, this is from four years ago to two weeks ago, and I won't read these because in, the, in, in the spirit of time and keeping moving, but you're starting to see that there's, there's a playfulness and inviting nature to the way that we talk about this that really resonates with people. You spend a third of your life in, uh, in your bedroom or with your mattress, and so for us to be able to make that more approachable is really, really compelling. I love that one, by the way. A copywriter deserves a bonus for that. Your mattress will always be there for you through the good times and the bad times. We like our puns at Casper. You know, there's a couple more coming your way, don't worry. Um, but uh, it's, it's really important. Um, this is fascinating to me. So if that tone of voice and, and visual kind of world is what we would call marketing the one to many, we spend as much time, maybe more, on what I'll call the one-to-one. -one. So we have a dedicated in-house group of people who do nothing but DM with customers and prospects every single day. If you guys could read the, the library of stuff that I'm fortunate enough to read daily or, or nightly, it's, it's a blessing. This woman on the left, her Instagram handle is Vagablogger. She, for 135 days straight, including today, has been publishing stories on Instagram of her DMs with Casper. We are now in the part of the relationship where we are planning a trip together. <laughs> We're going somewhere tropical, she decided, and we told her that it was a great thing, we'll bring our humidity fighting duvet. This is the kind of stuff that happens on a daily basis. Someone said, hook that duvet up with a cake and I promise I'll buy it. We asked him what his favorite kind was, we sent it with a go to bed message on it. He sent us back the purchase receipt for the duvet. Okay? This is the kind of stuff that really, really matters. If you think again about what is this category that has basically treated customers like numbers and receipts, and how do you get to them on a human level so they want to participate in your brand? Why is different greater than better? Because this is the stuff that truly creates lasting value. Casper has gotten into the world of physical retail. So we have, as I mentioned, just over 20 stores now in the US and Canada. Um, and there's some very deliberate things that we've done here. Um, the first is that we don't have commissioned salespeople, so all of our uh, sleep specialists and store associates are salaried employees who go through sleep certification and brand value training, just like any other employee would. Um, and critically, on the right side, you know, we did a lot of consumer research, and we found out, guess what? People don't like to try beds and lie on beds that they're gonna spend a lot of money and a lot of time with in a giant open environment. So we created these, duh, right? Like, but we did it. We created these modular, beautiful little homes that sit in our stores. Could the stores be more productive from a dollar per square foot standpoint if we shoved more mattresses all over the place? Maybe, but our conversion rates are super high. The stores are more productive than we thought. And in fact, this business model has been so successful that we can't keep up with demand because now you have to book your time in the stores in 10 minute intervals to trial the beds. Even when we go into wholesale, where we lose a little bit of control with our brand, one of the things that we're really keen on is making sure even in those co-branded environments that we have privacy screens. Simple little things that keep and remind consumers that we understand them from tracking along with them on their shopping journeys. We understand where they want to be and the space they want to be in when they're trying this kind of product. We also pull consumers into our product development. And I know a lot of companies talk about that. A lot of them don't do it. 
So Casper Labs has existed since the beginning of Casper. It's an R&D facility in San Francisco where most of our product design is done through co-creation with our best customers. So they receive an incentive oftentimes to come help us ideate, do shop-alongs, beta test products, take new products home. It's unbelievable. Some of our greatest innovations have come through there. We've created videos for product design and development where we interact with them. It's really, really important. And again, for, for a category that really just thinks and drives its product development and pipeline by what you know, is going to create the most money for them versus what do consumers really want, what are the unmet needs, um, that was a big unlock for us. Now, I'll have you know that some of our customers are non-humans. Um, you know, Casper was one of the, uh, Casper was the first company to create um, a dog bed in this category. A number have copied it since. But what did we do to launch our dog bed recently? We created what we called a do dog fluencer steak dinner. So we went out and found uh, the most, I guess, you know, the, the dogs with the most social cred on the interwebs and invited them all to a steak dinner. Um, where they could try the bed and, and nosh and enjoy themselves a little bit. A lot of press wrote about it. Every A-list dog you know is that this is an insanely posh event, right? But even that notion of customer centricity down to the four-legged kind, I think is pretty cool. That drives a lot of what we do. Um, and look, part of Casper's belief from the beginning was that it's really healthy to get the conversation of sleep outside of the bedroom. Okay? So for three and a half years now, we have had what we call our nap tours, where we go around the country with these beautifully outfitted uh, you know, vans and trucks, and we go to places where we think people really need sleep. So these are not places where if you're hungover and you just want to crash for two hours, it's not that. I mean, maybe it was in the very early days when we were like a dot-com brand and doing all that. But now it's about more purpose-driven, giving people who need rest that chance to rest. It's also obviously a great commercial opportunity for us to get people trialing our products and then buying them online. But it's not just at the pavement level, it's at 30,000 feet. So about a year, 15 months ago, we became American Airlines' uh, preferred sleep partner. So we outfit their planes now um, uh, with Casper products, ranging from pillows and duvets and mattress toppers to other types of things. And I think that's another way where, we're, again, it's healthy to bring these, the conversation of sleep outside of the bedroom. And most recently, guys, I'm at zero. Is it okay if I go on for about three minutes? Yeah? Okay. Um, most recently, about four months ago, um, we opened an experiential uh, uh, space in Manhattan called the Dreamery. And the Dreamery is a place where you can come in and buy a nap. Now, why did we do that? Because we believe that in this day and age, especially for the underslept, which is most of you, it's one of our largest you know, consumer profiles or segments, you're all the underslept, in case you didn't know that, um, napping is actually really healthy. Too long a nap is not healthy, but if you take a nap for about 30, 35 minutes, and if you've done this, you know, it re-energizes you, it's powerful. We have nap pods in all of our offices. It is not uncommon at Casper to walk around and see employees drooling at 2.30 in the afternoon and other people passing by as if nothing was going on. We have totally normalized the idea within our company that when you are tired, it is okay to put your head down and snooze out for a little bit. But for a long time, I think we've been fighting some cultural headwinds, right? The, the CEO of Netflix saying, HBO is not, I'm sorry if you're here, by the way. Um, <laughs> HBO is not my enemy, sleep is. I'll sleep when I die. I think we've turned a corner, thanks to Ariana and a lot of other people and Jeff Bezos who are publishing. You're, you're noticing that people who are well-rested are actually, you know, perform better in the world and they're happier and there's data from every single scientific study that says that sleep is as critical to our happiness, our health, our moods, our stability, our relationships, our mortality as exercise or wellness. Um, so, for the last two or three minutes, what I want to talk to you about is what we have our sights set on next from a disruption standpoint. And that is disrupting this stigma that still exists in large part um, that it's okay, it's okay to not sleep and that you'll make it up on the weekends or to come into work with four and a half or five and a half hours of sleep. It's not okay. In fact, let me tell you something. I'm gonna show some startling numbers for those of you that haven't seen this yet. The World Health Organization has basically declared a sleep loss epidemic in industrialized countries. 
I'm not going to go through all these stats. You can read them. 1.2 million missed work days a year. 25% of fa fatal traffic accidents are sleep-related. And guess what? If you don't buy into that stuff and you want to put your commercial hat on, 2% of our country's GDP is, uh, is affected in terms of lost pro productivity from insomnia or fatigue. Okay? This is a big, big deal, not just in the US, but around the world. And here's the thing. We all know it. So we've just conducted some research, and we asked uh, thousands of people, this is US only, you know, how much do you think each of the following contributes to your physical health and your mental well-being? And the amount of sleep I get in both cases trumped, oh god, I can't use that word, <laughs> beat the amount of exercise I get each day or how healthy I eat. So the reality is sleep is indeed a third pillar of wellness. It's the third pillar of wellness. And we have a really big job to do to cement that, you know, sleep's position in that conversation because it has huge, huge impact on everything else. There's, uh, you know, I mean, if you want to just Google it and check it out, there's plenty of stuff you can read about it. I feel like we've turned a corner now in our culture, and this is a part that really excites me about Casper. Um, we'll continue to make new products. We'll continue to do fun stuff with animals. We'll continue to do world-class marketing. But I think if you're going to you know, be having me back in two or three years, the thing I'm really hoping that we're talking about, and what I'd ask for all of your help in, you all you know, believe in exercise and fitness. You all don't sleep enough, or the majority of you don't. You all have companies that have wellness programs that invest in initiatives for exercise and for diet. Get sleep on the radar. Talk to us, talk to other people, but we believe that a well-rested world is a better world. And, uh, and with that, sorry, had to do it. Thank you.